Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for the bride? Good afternoon everyone. I want to welcome you all here today for this very happy occasion, the wedding of Scott and Jill. My name is Sally Cassidy and I've been authorised by the Registrar General to conduct civil marriages in Fife. Before we begin the marriage ceremony, I need to ask, who brings this woman to the marriage? I do. You must be very proud of her today. <laughs> Weddings are events which are remembered and talked about long after the day. Some of you here might remember mini-skirted brides in the 60s and then the 80s brought those massive shoulder pads. Whatever the style of the wedding, a lot of planning has usually gone into it and today is no exception. However, we have now reached the moment where all the lists can be forgotten. This day will be remembered both for the things that went to plan and for the things which didn't. <laughs> the including bus. <laughs> the wheels of the bus. <laughs> Didn't go round and round. <laughs> the story of this day will live in your memories and be repeated often. Every wedding is a unique and special occasion and it's a privilege and a real pleasure to be here officiating at Scott and Jill's wedding today. I know they would like me to thank you for being here to share this special day with them and to celebrate the beginning of this new stage of their life together as husband and wife. You have in some way touched the lives of these two and I know it means a lot to them to have you here. They've chosen to be married in a lovely location which makes a wonderful setting for their wedding and the sun's shining. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> Scott and Jill met six and a half years ago. Jill was studying for her dissertation and Rachel wickedly dragged her away to join her on her works night out. <laughs> Scott arrived three hours later. Is it true that this is a Logan trait? <laughs> <laughs> Just the men, obviously. <laughs> and so it was the infamous Yates bar where they met. <laughs> there were no awkward silences. Apparently, Jill can talk to Olympic gold medal <laughs> <laughs> But this didn't put Scott off, even when they met again at an 80s themed party and Jill was wearing crimped hair, neon makeup, and leg warmers. <laughs> oh, and Scott arrived three hours late, <laughs> <laughs> dressed as Scott. <laughs> the first official date went well. The second date was interesting, with Jill being called to rescue her friends who had had one too many. <laughs> Scott still wasn't scared of though, and 
and Jill sensed he might be a keeper. So moving on, Jill and Scott went to live in Aberdeen in 2008, where surprisingly Scott got a job in oil and gas. After a year, Jill made the best, and she says worst, decision to become a teacher. <laughs> Scott supported her through this. There were tears, there were tantrums, there were emotional breakdowns and talks of quitting, and Jill was quite stressed too. <laughs> <laughs> In 2009, Scott transferred his work to Dunfermline, and they bought their first house together, which they still live in today, of course. Last year, they visited Australia, and 10,480 miles from home, Scott popped the question at the top of the Sydney Harbour Bridge in spite of his major fear of heights. I'm with you there, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> so well done, Scott, for doing two things that scared him that day and for going to the top of my impressive Scott's proposals list. <laughs> <laughs> They've since spent the last year organising their weddings. People list wedding organising as their major hobby. It does tend to take over your life. <laughs> Although I think Scott has still managed to sneak in some golf. <laughs> and Jill has been in her element, shopping and weddings combined so nicely. <laughs> so your relationship, home life and careers are well established. Let's make this official and begin the process which will make you husband and wife. <laughs> Some of you may never have attended a civil marriage in Scotland before, so I'd like to take a moment to explain a little about the form it takes. At the heart of a civil marriage are the promises made publicly by a bride and groom. Firstly, they'll confirm their identities. Then they make a declaration that, that there are no legal impediments to their marriage and confirm their intention to accept each other as husband and wife. After they've exchanged their wedding rings and completed their marriage vows, they'll come forward to sign their marriage schedule, followed by their two witnesses and myself. This schedule is one of the final legal documents for their marriage and the details from it will later be recorded in the marriage register for the district. Marriage is a defining moment in any couple's life, a sign of the depth of their commitment to each other and an important occasion which we've been invited to share with them. A marriage is a promise of hope, a sign not only that a man and a woman love each other but also that they trust that love to sustain their future together through all the ups and downs of any couple's life. <laughs> now the first reading which Scott and Jill have decided to include in their marriage ceremony today is entitled, Today is the Beginning. It's written by Patience Strong, who was Scott's grand favourite poet, and Scott's sister Nicola is going to read it for us. <coughs> to ask you both if you will formally confirm your full names for me. This is the only time we will use your full names in the ceremony. Scott, are you Scott Andrew Logan? I am. And Jill, are you Jill Batchelor? I am. Thank you. Scott and Jill, you're now about to marry each other in accordance with the laws of Scotland, in my presence and the presence of your witnesses and guests. You've already completed all the necessary legal steps for your marriage, including having your names displayed to the public in the registrar's offices in Fife. And they'll soon be asking you to make the promises to each other that will join you in a partnership of marriage. Before you're married, I have to remind you of the solemn and binding character of these declarations. <coughs> marriage, according to the laws of Scotland, is the union of two people to the exclusion of all others and is willingly entered into by you. But marriage is, of course, as many of us here will already know, much more than just a legal contract. It's an opportunity for the two of you to share your lives in a really special way, to share your strengths and your weaknesses, your hopes and your fears. It's a relationship based on mutual love and respect in which each of you tries to bring out the best in the other and one that I know will enrich your lives. 
Lisa, would you like to take Joe's side? <laughs> Turn and face each other. Scott, please repeat this declaration after me. I, Scott, sincerely declare. I, Scott, sincerely declare. That I know of no legal objection. That I know of no legal objection. To my marrying Jill. To my marrying Jill. And I accept her as my lawful wedded wife. And I accept her as my lawful wedded wife. Well done. And Jill, repeat this declaration after me. I, Jill, sincerely declare. I, Jill, sincerely declare. That I know of no legal objection. That I know of no le legal objection. To my marrying Scott. To my marrying Scott. And I accept him. And accept as, him. As but, my, as my lawful wedded husband. As my lawful wedded husband. Welcome. Marriage is a commitment to love and care for each other as husband and wife, but also, as you two know full well, the best of friends. Now you can relax for a moment because you have an exercise. The second reading is a poem entitled I'll Be There by Louise Cudden with some slight adaptations. Scott's other sister, Yvonne, will read this one. I will be there, my darling, through thick and thin, when your mind is a mess and your head is in a spin. When your plane has been delayed and you've missed the last train, when life is threatening to drive you insane. When your thrilling who done it has lost its last page, when somebody tells you you look in your age. When your coffee's too cool and your wine is too warm, when the forecast said fine, but you're out in a storm. When your quick break hotel turns into a slum, and when your holiday photos show only your thumb. When you park for five minutes in a residence bay and return to discover you've been pulled away. When the jeans that you bought in hope aren't or in haste, just stick to your hips and don't reach round your waist. When your face is most, when your face most like brown to you out in red rashes, when you, when as soon as you look up, the bloody thing crashes. When the school day ends and your poor head is aching, when the oven's not heating and you want to start baking, just relax and keep calm and there's no need to shed tears. I'll be here when you need me. I'll come for your fears. For the good and the bad and when it matters most, I'll be there to pick you up first to raise your toast. I'll be there through thick and thin, no matter what. I can tell you I can't tell you what's coming next except Jill will have stopped. <laughs> When two people pledge their love and care for each other in marriage, they create a partnership that binds them closer than any spoken or written words. We've now come to the moment when you will seal the declarations you have both made by the giving and receiving of your wedding rings. These rings are made from a pure and precious metal and they form a perfect circle with no beginning and no end. As such, they're symbols of your love and commitment to each other without end. And I know they'll always remind you of the promises you make to each other today. Incidentally, they're worn on the third finger because of an ancient belief that a vein from that finger goes directly to the heart. And in modern times, it's been proved to be true. No mm -hmm. heart. <laughs> See, John. I give you this ring today. I give you this ring today. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. Wear it always. Wear it always. As a symbol of my promise to you. As a symbol of my promise to you. You have given and received these rings as symbols of the deep love, respect, and affection you have for each other. 
and now your marriage vows. Scott, once again, please say after me. I, Scott, take you, Jill. I, Scott, take you, Jill. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. For as long as we both shall live. For as long as we both shall live. Now grant me, Jill, please say after me. I, Jill, take you, Scott. I, Jill, take you, Scott. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. For as long as we both shall live. For as long as we both shall live. Now grant. Into this commitment of your marriage, you bring your promise to love and cherish each other, to be open and honest, to give your help and support whenever it's needed, and never to take each other or what you have between you for granted. May you strive all your lives to meet this commitment with the same love and devotion you now possess, for love is truly the greatest gift we're given to share. Now our fine reading today is so short and to the point that it will take less time to read it than my introduction to it. <laughs> it's a very brief little poem by Ogden Nash. It's called Marriage Advice and its message is very plain and simple and a great bit of advice. And Jill's sister, Paula, will read this one. To keep your marriage brimming with love and love and cup whenever you're wrong, admit it. Whenever you're right, shut up. <laughs> now, on that rather prosaic note, <laughs> we come to a very important part of the ceremony. Scott, I've one final thing to ask you. Do you take Jill as your wife? I do. <laughs> and Jill, do you take Scott as your husband? I do. Following the declarations you have made before me in the presence of your witnesses, it gives me great pleasure to pronounce you husband and wife. Congratulations, Scott. You may kiss your bride. <laughs> schedule. You're welcome to take photos of this, but do please return to your seats afterwards. Right, Jill, if you come this way and sit down, and Scott, you go around the other way and stand.